and here we are. Fix my hat a little bit. Hello everyone, I'm Adam Papp again and welcome to another episode of There's a Place, the ASMR talk show. The show that feels good to hear. Uh, as always, we'll start off with a oh, barbecue restaurant. We'll start off with a monologue. You can do that every week. I'm trying to think. You know, I've just done a very busy day. I have a lot of lessons I learned. But uh, I'll tell the big story that involves uh, major rock stars and celebrities. Uh, so today I'm over on the west side of Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, I'm just, it's one of those days where I have something to do at the end of the day. And then just kind of everything is just killing time until my... You know, I had a dinner meeting tonight and then to do the show. And so, taking out, like, what am I going to do today? I hear on uh, the Twitter, it doesn't matter where I heard it, but The Doors, the legendary uh, psychedelic rock band, it's their 50th anniversary of when their album came out today. And they're being honored by the city of Los Angeles and having a big ceremony in Venice Beach. Well, it's not every day I get to go to Venice Beach, so I'm like, oh, I'll go, ch- go check it out. So I'm walking around on Venice Beach. I'm seeing all these, you know, uh, kids, different characters, these muscle men and weird street performers and just having a, a good time. And uh, also taking the opportunity to answer some emails. So I'm just sitting there staring at my phone. And uh, this guy is like, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. And I watch There's a Place. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. Just talking to him a little bit. And then I go. And uh, it's time for the ceremony. So the two surviving Doors are there, and they played a song. Now, if you're not familiar with the Doors, uh, there's a good guy in the band and a great guy in the band, and they're both dead. Uh, but the two side guys are, are still going, not strong, but they're still going. Uh, so they, they performed kind of a reunion concert, the guitar player and, and the drummer. And they sang, and it was really awesome. And uh, there's actually a weird... Uh, coincidence, I see a sign, this guy Zuma Dog, that used to be on public access, and he's down there. He's holding up a sign, so I go to uh, go meet him, and I get a phone call, and it's somebody doing a survey for the city of Los Angeles for the voting, and they're like, who do you think you're going to vote for for mayor? And they start reading a list of candidates, and Zuma Dog is one of the candidates, so I'm like, oh, I'm just about to go talk to Zuma Dog. I'm going to vote for him. And then the doors are there. We're hearing about how uh, Jim Morrison... Uh, used to live at Venice Beach and would just hang out and, you know, be himself. And we, they all met each other down at Venice Beach. And he'd get inspired by the ocean and stuff and all that nonsense. And I realized, you know, that's what L.A. is all about. Just hanging out, you know, talking to the people, meeting on Venice Beach and listening to some good old-fashioned rock music. Venice Beach, great place. My guest tonight is uh, an MC, rapper. There's a slight distinction. He does both. Um, he's he's part of that whole Project Blowed crew, and he's done a million other things uh, since then. Friend of uh, DJ Seedless, friend of the show. But please welcome Mr. CR. He was eating some uh, some chips or something. It looked like so. He's just gonna be uh, a minute. Oh, he's got to take this, the shoes. I'm glad he remembered that. What's up, Mr. CR? How you doing? Same shit, different tour, bro. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We did. We got to do the um, the handshake. Mm-hmm. We did it two different ways before the show. Oh yeah, I did. We did the fist bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I feel like I know you like a whole lot better. Just hey, where we at? Those two. I was trying to figure that out. I think this is over near. Um, Near the other side of uh, the LA River from here, in okay. downtown LA, kind of the Arts District. Wow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we're just hanging out. How was your New Year's? I was pretty good. Pretty good. Same old shit, you know. We had a little alcohol, chill with my um, newborn daughter and all that, you know what I mean? I hope she wasn't drinking alcohol. She was. She was? <laughs> wow. Yeah, she just like her daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's great that you're really spending time together. So. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, oh, I think this is the other angle on that no, I think uh, this bridge, yeah. I don't know where it is. You're from L.A., right? Mm-hmm. You're from the South L.A.? South Central Los Angeles. 
You know, the east side to be exact. The east side. East of the 110 freeway. Between, east of the 110. Yeah, between um, the 105 and Century. Yeah, okay. Boulevard. That's people when they hear about like South Central mm-hmm. or like the hood or whatever, I don't think your average person realizes how big it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It basically goes from the airport to like Long Beach. Mm-hmm. It's all just the hood. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Pretty much. It's they got some cool stuff down there. Cool yeah. little stuff and uh, cool people and all that. Yeah. What what would you say that people who didn't know kind of the diversity mm-hmm. of the hood? Like all the different, like cool Hawkins House of Burgers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and, right there uh, by the projects. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. And it took like across the street yeah, from the yeah, projects. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, what would you tell people is like the main thing they wouldn't know about South Central or wouldn't expect? Well, that is telling to people like myself coming from that particular area. You know what I mean? That not only that, but, you know, I mean, uh, well, yeah, I would just say that. <laughs> but then also most of the, uh, its reputation is kind of yeah, learned. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I grew up, I grew up there all my life, so I've seen any and everything you could think of, as far as all that bullshit that they show people outside of the box or outside of where I grew up at. Mm. I've seen all that shit, shit that they, the minister society, the movie minister society, boys in the hood. I lived through all that. You know, I was like maybe like I would say I was like 10, 12 years old, playing with a friend of mine from one of my playmates from around the corner, and she was about the same age. You know, and we hear gunshots, go to the corner, it's her uncle dead. Well, he was dead, and with his eyeball hanging out his head, but his bite was his, from his nerves, oh. still doing like that. We like 12, like, seeing him right there at the, right the corner, so it's a whole lot of stuff that I've seen. What, did he get shot or something? Yeah, he got shot. He was a drug dealer, and he got shot by, I guess, somebody that was jealous of the fact that he was making money, and they wasn't getting the money with him. So, no, a lot of bullshit like that. And that's a pretty common scene. Yeah. Like, Just over the last two years, I've been like 20 funerals. Wow. Yeah, hell yeah. Is there any sense that, uh, like, uh, I mean, obviously there's like, this is not normal, mm-hmm. but there's, it kind of does become normal. Well, yeah. Uh, Do you feel any, uh, I gotta say pressure, but any sense of like, you know, maybe we should do something about this. Like, are well, you getting into gun control or like well i mean you know the main thing i mean in order for it to be like in order for some change to happen the people are gonna have to want to change but a lot of people you know what i mean are driven by i mean you know in the area it's pretty much probably stricken yeah so people are basically driven by actually making a living mm-hmm. so a lot of the people over there are doing whatever the fuck they gotta do to make that living so if they're doing with, on some desperate type shit, kind of, you know what I mean? So if they're doing whatever the fuck they got to do to make that living, they don't really give a fuck about what a per, uh, also about what you think is right or wrong. I'm, this is what I got to do to get mm-hmm. paid. So I don't really see the shit going on over there changing, you know, because people are not living morally anyway as far as trying to just make a living for themselves, a lot of people. It would take yeah. kind of a whole overhaul of everything yeah hell yeah like, motherfucker uh, yeah because there's like people think it'll it's like just like a gun issue or drugs mm-hmm. or whatever there's like not stores in some of those neighborhoods mm-hmm. like i was i remember once i was in a liquor store and they sell like socks and t-shirts and stuff mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah and then i was like so that's like who would get it you know i guess mm-hmm. if you're in a hurry and then i was like oh there's no target around here no no there's yeah. no walmart no 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 you have to take and you're probably not driving if you're down mm-hmm. there or if you like you have to go all it's like it's just not yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, I was in um, Compton uh, a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. There's no s- street, uh, there's like very little street lights, but then and the businesses don't have lighted signs. Like there's no light. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed that in certain places? Yeah, well, like the yeah. sun goes down and it's just like dark and yeah, well, I'm uninviting. Honest. And then, uh, you know, <clears throat> a per, a predominantly, you know, well, a lot of areas that I hang out around there or whatnot, you know, some people shoot the street lights out because of certain things that's going on in that area. So, you know what I mean? You got game banging, game banging or whatnot. So, you know, you got people trying to uh, not be shot or not be seen. You know, you got police that constantly harass the um, people that's hanging around the area because it's a gang infested area. So I guess they feel like they're doing their job too. So, you know, a lot of the street lights where I'll be at being shot out. 
You know what I mean? Or they get in there and fuck with the shit. Just to make it dark on purpose. Wow. You know what I mean? But like you said too, as far as businesses, a lot of them don't really have like, it, yeah, it's, you know what I mean? But I guess they living on whatever budget they got to do whatever they got to do to make mm -hmm. their little money come in, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Also probably once it goes down, you wouldn't want to be hanging out right in a store. Hell no. All right, so your um, like subgenre of mm -hmm. hip hop, mm -hmm. uh, I saw gangsta rap. Mm -hmm. So after you, would you, uh, are you, are you into that label? Well, I mean, that's one of my hats, but as far as myself as an artist, uh -huh. I carry many hats. Okay. You know what I mean? But, but you know, I would call myself, I consider myself a jack of all trades when it comes to hip hop, because I could do anything to any beat whatsoever. And a part of that is because of the training that I had when dealing with a place called the Good Life Cafe in right. the early 90s. The legendary Good uh, Life Cafe, you know what I mean? Hip hop. Yeah, so being the fact that I had that training and that tutelage, you know what I mean, from the freestyle fellowships, the LA Cools, the, you know what I mean, all those type of dudes or whatnot, I'm able to rap to any and whatever type of beat at any given time, like, you know what I mean? Is, but, but yeah. you'll do gangster rap. Yeah, I do that too, though. So is, um, what kind of, because uh, I always thought gangster rap was more of like a subject matter thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, but are there beats that are like gangster? Yeah, but well, you know, beats? yeah. To me, it's just like how you said. It's to me, it's basically like subject matter what you talk about. But see, me as an artist, I talk about a large variety of different topics. You see what I'm saying? Like, um, matter of fact, one of my um, a friend of mine by the name of L.A. Cool, he calls himself the rapper. Man, he's from Project Blood, Good Life, but he kind of took us on his wing. But anyway, I was having a particular situation to pertain to what you know you talking about, and it was really bothering me. He was like, "Well, won't you just write about it?" You know what I mean? So I wrote about it, I got over it. So basically, you know what I mean? It's just like how you said, as far as, you know what I mean? It's just about what you're talking about. So, you know, I talk about a large variety of topics, but lately I've been doing a lot of stuff to try to cater to the people that I hang around or whatnot, you know what I mean? Which is, I want people in the area that I'm from to feel, because they're not really in the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Shit like that, even the technical shit, even though we got that, and it's a, um, a base that follows that, the, you know what I mean, the creativity as far as, you know what I mean, everybody talk about the same shit, but how you're saying it and how you're able to round them words to make it make sense, a lot of people admire that, but just the people that I hang with over there, they don't really admire that, but that's the majority of people buying the records, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's a catch-22, so yeah, it's about I do balance. Don't, don't. Oh, yeah. here we are at, um, so we're in Lamert Park now. Oh, yeah, 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 see that? Yeah, that's the Project Blow right yeah, there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chaos Network. Yeah, Chaos Network, yeah. 43, 43, 333. Do you hang out in Lamar Park much? Yeah, yeah, I hang out there dinner every day. I mean, I stay over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I love, I'm about right within walking distance from the project. But I love the um, the Goodwill that's in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's just like awesome, like... The Goodwill? The Goodwill thrift store. It's a little up on Crenshaw. A little north. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've yeah, got this yeah, yeah. awesome, uh, like, Indian road sign. You talk about, about exposition over there. Yeah, right yeah, over there. Yeah. And then a Starbucks that looks kind of like a like 60s. Yeah, right across the street from it's, me. I really like kind of the south of, really south of the 10. It's like mm -hmm. kind of going back in yeah, time. Yeah, south of the 10, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't, uh, but they got the train coming through Yeah, yeah they're building that shit over there too. I do guess you, that's a good thing, you know, whatever. I don't know, how do you, how do you feel about that? Like the, just kind of, making it easy for for kind of development to come in and yeah well i mean i mean people got to get to where they need to go yeah not, you know what i mean i have noticed that over the years traffic is a motherfucker you know what i mean it seems like it's a whole a hell of a lot more traffic lately so i guess if you want to park your car and save some motherfucking gas and just get to where you need to go at a timely fashion you jump on a motherfucking train and get to where you need to go i'm not it don't really bother me you know, as do far as I'm doing that. Huh? Do you drive? Not right, right now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not driving, but I do drive, you know, but yeah. now and then, you know what I mean? But, but, um, I don't think you can get better than the situation of being in a car. I don't care if the trains go everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, a car is way better. Yeah. car is way better, way faster. There. You get you get a hell of a lot more done in one day yeah, riding you in the your... car. Because the majority of the time, you know, as far as lately I've been doing the transit bullshit, so it seems like the majority of my day is spent waiting on that motherfucker to pull up. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? And then being the fuck, the, who the fuck I am, you know what I mean? And a lot of shit that I've been through in my lifetime, it's not really cool for me to be standing out there like that. I gotta be constantly looking around and constantly be on point. And every day when I'm jumping on that bullshit, I gotta make sure that my patience level is appropriately accommodated because I might end up having to fuck somebody up. Because there's a lot of J-cats on there that you know, I just learned to be patient and ignore them dudes because I will fuck one of them dudes up. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a high stress uh, environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, everyone's man. running late. But I'm used to that. We used to it. Crabbed in there. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. You had a song on the Soul Plane soundtrack. Mm-hmm. That is a very underrated movie. Mm-hmm. I would say it's just as good as Airplane, the movie okay. that's parody. I've never seen Airplane. You've never seen Airplane? Nah. Maybe it's a little bit better than Soul Plane. Yeah, I've never seen Airplane. It's the same idea where it's just like. Uh, like a lot of like goofy gags. Yeah. Went on another big cast. Mm-hmm. On a plane. Did you get to go to the premiere of Soul Plane or anything? Nah. That's nah. Easter song. Yeah. Yeah. But see how that happened was, um, <clears throat> I was standing in front of my gate smoking a cigarette, and then one of the homies dropped past. Was this dude named Trey Lo? He was signed, to one of my fellow um, Afterlife Records. Remember, we signed to Afterlife Records back then. But he was driving down the street, and he was like, "Hey, man, there's a movie coming out, man." Be a method man. Then he just got the name dropping on his dudes. I'm like, yeah. yeah, you got some music. I just gave him a CD with a bunch of shit on there. Six months later, probably less than that, a guy that who we record this shit with was like, hey man, you didn't tell me y'all shit was gonna sell plane. I'm like, I didn't know our shit was gonna be on sell plane. And then we went to the movie theater and seen it, and <laughs> sure enough, the shit was on sell plane. But that's how that happened. You so know? you didn't even know it was in it? Did they nah. pay you? I said what? Did they pay you? See, that's a whole nother story, you know what I mean? That's a whole nother story, you know. The CD went to dude, then he handed it to dude and dude, and then this guy had the direct connect with MGM, and they cut the check, I guess it was supposed to be for $10,000, and out of all that, I, was, I seen like maybe a thousand out of that. You know what I mean? A bunch of people got paid that didn't have nothing to do with the song, you know what I mean? And Yeah. Overall, are you happy that it was in the movie, or would you have just preferred to have done well, your own thing and not have to deal with the... Well, I'm pretty much happy that it was in the movie, being the fact that I could put that on my resume. Yeah. I wish the money situation would have panned out a little bit, you know what I mean? But Yeah, yeah that whatever, would have been pretty sweet. A, yeah, that was a lesson learned, too. So, fuck You it. gotta be... You know, you, you never know yeah, with these yeah. opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know the Bishop Don the Magic Wand? I don't know him you, personally. I met him a few times. Okay, you've seen him around? Yeah, I see, I've seen him a hell of a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean, I don't really know him like that, but, but you know, I've been around him a few times, you know what I mean? I just got recently like a free CD at like a record store. Just in front. It was a mix tape he put out where it's like him talking mm-hmm. and then like Isley Brothers songs. Okay. It was very, I thought it was going to be him rapping. Okay. Well. But it's just like a mix he put together. Yeah, well he probably said talking some shit on that motherfucker, you know. Yeah. He's got a uh, good taste in music though. Yeah, well you know, he's an OG, old school type of dude, so. Is he really a pimp? I believe so. Because he dresses up like a, the super yeah, fly yeah, kind you know, of. I mean, you should, you do your research, he's on all sorts of documentaries and all that, you know what I mean? But he been doing that shit since he was a youngster, so. That's what he says. Well, I don't know him like that. To yeah, I, I wouldn't want to cross him either. I believe Yeah, but I, Don from Lee, what I've seen, it looked yeah. like he's pretty much real to me, you know what I mean, from what I've seen. That's an interesting uh, career path into uh, popular culture. I mean, hey, man, you got to do what you got to do to get paid. Exactly. Know? Fuck that. Exactly. Uh, oh. So on the subject of gangster rap, okay, because you're you know connected. And you, yeah, uh, yeah. Biggie and Tupac. Okay. <laughs> was it an inside job? Was it Suge Knight who killed Tupac? I don't know. I I can't really speak on that shit because I wouldn't fuck with that one of them niggas. So I I can't just really be like, yeah, it was a. <laughs> and even if it was an inside job, I wouldn't tell y'all. <laughs> That's I true. Be, I don't want to be the next inside job if it was. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So. But no, I don't know. I don't know. But there, there's not. It's not like a, you know, a no secret or anything in the hip hop community. Who? Yeah, man. I don't. Your guess is as good as mine, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you know, I don't know none of them dudes, so I can't really speak on it. I could just go by. You know, I'm going up the same shit. You, you know, I'm on the outside looking in. Yeah. So, 
Did you have any know. interactions with Suge Knight or anything? Or I met him one time, you know, at the um, but see, you know, I met him at a show right before that situation happened with him running over dude. You know what I mean? So towards the end of his, uh, yeah, his yeah, reign. Yeah. yeah, you know, I met him. I'm like, oh, okay, that's Suge Knight. Was he like nice or was it? I mean, he seemed regular. I mean, okay. you know, I, I mean, I'm from the east side, so everybody I hang around is it, just like him or even worse. So he's just another dude to me. He didn't like look at you like you turn white or anything. I mean, shit. Nah, yeah, he's just a regular dude to me. Okay. You know what I mean? All right, well, that's, I guess, good. He seems so scary to me. Oh, well, you know. Just, I don't know. He must know something, though, if he, you know, was behind the scenes with all these great artists and stuff. Yeah, but, I, you know, I don't really too much know about their situation because, you know, I wasn't dealing with them dudes on a daily basis or nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these cats, you know, run in, hey, what's up? Yeah, you, you, all right, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I could just speak on my shit. I don't know. Even if I knew whatever, I wouldn't tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> shit, yeah, nah. That's me right there in the background smoking that cigarette, too. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you smoke cigarettes? Yeah, I do. Are you a Ever tried to quit or anything? Yeah, I have. It's hard, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. I've done a focus group for cigarettes, and every single person was like, oh, yeah, I started with a teenager, tried to quit, can't do it. Yeah, I started as a teenager, too. It's kind of, it's, but. I like smoking cigarettes. Though. Yeah, I kind of like cigarettes, too. Yeah, I work out, too, though, so. Yeah, it's, it balances out. Yeah, 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 I work out, too. I got a little bit more stamina than people think. People never say anything good about cigarettes. You yeah, ain't nothing really good it. about them. They like, kind of, yeah, calm you down, relaxing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. You, Make you look cool. Yeah, you want to eat, smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Drink, smoke a cigarette. Bust a nut, smoke a cigarette. That's, mm -hmm. that's a great time. Uh, coffee and cigarettes, too. Smoke, yeah, I love that, too. Good combo. Yeah. It's kind of, oh, yeah. You know who I had a run-in with from the hip-hop world who? last week? Ice T. Yeah. And he was at rallies. Where at? What rallies he was at? Glendale. Okay. Well, that sounds like somewhere he'd be at. Oh, oh, so you're not surprised by that? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, he's rich. That dude rich, and he, you know, he's a fucking uh, movie star. But TV Rally's star. hamburgers, you know, the these checkers on the East Coast. But shit, everybody got to eat. <laughs> and I'm telling him he might have been. I don't know. He probably like, yeah, fuck. I let me. I get some real quick. Let me stop in this motherfucking rally. He was with. Shit. Yeah, it, I was just like, if I saw him at McDonald's, mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But well, Rally's is kind of an unknown. Well, you know, McDonald's is known, but they, they got signs in that motherfucker talking about you eat this shit, you're going to fuck around and catch cancer mm -hmm. under the table. So I'm pretty sure he's like, fuck it, I'd rather take my chances for rallies. Fuck it. His, got his, his boys that he was with, they all were mm -hmm. dressed like gangsters, but like from a movie from the 90s. Okay, well. Do gangsters really dress like that? Well, I mean. How Tight do, kind of t-shirt, the black hat. Well, I mean, right now, you know, gangster don't really have a look now. But now, you know, I mean, it's it's been some dudes that I thought was a straight weenie. You know what I mean? But when the situation occurred, you know, he proved to be other than a weenie. You know what I mean? But I judged him by his appearance. So a lot of times, you know, you could. Yeah, Gangster don't really have no look, but as far as the 90s, yeah, you know, we used to wear khakis, chucks. Mm -hmm. Every day we was wearing khakis, chucks, braids, and, you know what I mean? That was, you know, that was just the thing. You know, everybody was walking around looking like Snoop Dogg. Yeah, they looked like exactly, like, from... No, Dub C or something, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's how we dressed. You know, my people, you know, when they used to buy me school clothes, they were like, damn, ain't you tired of getting the same shit every year? Because they was buying me Dickies and Pendletons. Every year I'm getting the same exact shit over again. Chuck Taylors and Nike Cortez and shit like that. That's a good look though, kind of. Yeah, I like it. Because all of those clothes are like classic, like from mm -hmm. the 50s. And they're pretty cheap too. Yeah, and they're well, good quality. Yeah, yeah, you starch them up and make them look real nice, yeah. and, you know. I feel like there's all sorts of like, little like tricks and tips like that mm -hmm. from like, you know, that lifestyle that like, would make sense if you were to like study it or mm -hmm. like um, like I heard that mob guys in, in New York like the Italian mafia mm -hmm. they keep their money in a like a wad and mm -hmm. they use the rubber band from broccoli 
It's the rubber band from broccoli? You know, you get a bunch of broccoli and yeah. they get the thick rubber band. Mm -hmm. That's what they use to hold their money. Why do they do that? Because it's, it's, um, they need to wash and that's the, like, somebody figured out that's like the best way to just mm -hmm. like wad up a bunch of money. Just okay. Thick, well, thick I, rubber band. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing we used to do. Well, not everybody, but the smart guys, you know, we used to keep our money in our sock. You know what I mean? But, and I'll give you an example of how that was smart. You know what I mean? For one, one situation, I was walking home, coming from seeing some punk bitch, you know what I mean? And then um, it was a group of guys standing at the corner. So when I walked to the corner, it was like 10 of them, 10, 15, 20 of them. So they banged on me, hey, where you from? I told them where I was from, whatever, and I kept it pushing. Um, and then as I walked past them, dude get behind me, he like, uh, hey, hey, come here. So I turned, my dumb ass turned around. I'm looking at the guy straight forward. He adjusting his hat and pulling his pants up and tightening his belt while this guy talking to me. Next thing you know, this dude fired me, boom, so I fired him the dude, bam. Anyway, to make a long story short, a guy jumped or whatever. And you know, they took my wallet and all type of other shit. I got knocked out and all that. It was 10 of them, but I was being by myself. But this the moral of the story though. That money that was in my sock was still in my sock. You see what I'm saying? So they took everything I had in my pockets, but I still had my money in my sock. Which is what I'm saying. We carried our money in our sock, which is why I'm saying, well, you know, they do their thing with the, the broccoli, the thick rubber, rubber band, band, you know what I mean? Everybody do their shit for whatever reason they do it for. And that's the reason why I carry my money in my side. Do you still do that to this day? Nah, I don't okay. do that no more. Kind of, get a little older, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody, been, anybody jump me, jump me, you ain't going to, you going to have to pay for that. Hey, I saw a picture on your Instagram where you got like shapes shaved mm -hmm. into your head. Mm -hmm. How long, does, <laughs> how long does that last? Shit, I would say probably about two weeks. That long? Maybe like a week, two weeks, you know what I mean? Depending on how fast your hair grow. Yeah. It looked cool. I, yeah, my homie, my homie, he did that. He was like, man, I'm gonna show you I know how to cut hair and all that type of shit. So he hooked that up. Have you done, that was the first time you did something like that? Well, that was the first, that was the first time I did something like that? Yeah. Nah, I've done it before. You know it's different. I mean? Did you ever yeah, get yeah. a word or anything? Nah, I never got no motherfucking word. Okay. Nah. That's kind of like an eight more 80s, yeah, I ain't early got no 90s. Word. I mean, I probably would if I knew somebody that was really good at that shit. I wouldn't do it now, though. Nah, me, you know, usually I wear hats anyway. I'm a hat type of dude. It just so happened tonight, I didn't wear no hat. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, we're in the kitchen, so you can... Okay, well, where the food at? Be a good place to wear a hat. <laughs> in case any you know, hair mm -hmm. falls in the... No, yeah, yeah. Yeah? I don't like it when... The hair net, I'm good with. I don't like it when they make the guy wear the beard net. Yeah. It's, yeah, they, I, I, at one particular job, they made me wear a beard net. I'm like, come on, what the fuck do I need a beard net for? Yeah, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's, I don't got no hair in my fucking face. It's kind of gross. Yeah, it's like crazy. Yeah. How was your 2016? 2016 was Very real. Very controversial year. Yeah, it was real productive for me. You know, I had, uh, I had my daughter in 2016, so. It's your first my, daughter? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So that's the most, the most memorable moment in 2016 for me. But I went through a whole lot in 2016. A whole lot of shit happened in 2016. A whole lot of shit. Yeah. Good stuff. I don't know. I, a lot of great uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. like well, as far as entertainment, would you, would, you know, would you? Like political entertainment. Oh, well, like, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. 2017. 2017. How do you feel about that? I'm waiting to see what it holds for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to going in 2017. Me too. There's kind of like this, like, uh, uncertainty about the future mm -hmm. that I'm really into. I think everyone's feeling it. Mm -hmm. Just kind of this, we'll see what happens. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm trying to make some shit crack. That's another year for me to, you know what I mean, move toward accomplishing my goal, whatever my goals may be. You know, I get another year to go for the shit, you know what I mean? I've been blessed to still be here because there's a lot of people that didn't make it. It's a lot of people that's in jail. It's a lot of people that might be bums, but you still living. You may pass 2016, 
Yeah, you can come in 2017, get your ass off, get your shit together, get off your, get on your motherfucking feet, and make some shit happen. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely looking forward to a new year. Yeah, yeah. What are you trying to do in 2017? What I'm trying to do in 2017, everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, man. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to get everybody to uh, download the goddamn green tape too in 2017. That shit drop it. Uh, right before the summer. I believe it's August or April or something like that. So that's my new project that I'm working on is the Green Tape 2. And if you ain't got the Green Tape 1, which is free on datpip.com, go ahead and download that shit too. It's free. So the Green Tape 2 finna shit on everything in 2017. Anybody doing any rap music, anything, I'm shitting on all of y'all motherfuckers. Straight up. So, yeah. Do you have, do you have any <laughs> non-disses on the album? Nine disses? Yeah, I mean, you said you're just well, you know, on, on, going after everybody. Well, basically, I'm just going after everybody as far as in the sense of uh, my, my music is going to be better than everybody. So, oh, okay. You know what I mean? But as far as dissing them, no, nah, I'm not Oh, okay. Nobody. I thought you yeah, meant that yeah. you were like... I don't, I'm not into doing diss records. You know, I had one guy just recently like do a diss record about me, and I, you know, the only reason why I entertained that little bullshit because he hiding all the way in Chicago. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, but well, the only thing I can do is respond to this little bullshit. You know what I mean? And then I noticed that by me responding to this nobody ass nigga, you know what I mean? He was starting to get views and all that type of shit. So I just changed the name of the song from his name to something else. And now he's back to his two, three views that he get. And that's just that. I don't do this records. I'm like, me, I'm more or less like, you know, if a motherfucker got a problem with me, I'm not going to go on a record and talk about it. I would just approach you personally and then see what the fuck you talk about then. And then, you know what I mean? And then I do a rap about what happened when I saw your ass, you know what I mean, like that, but I don't, I don't do diss records. Did you know the guy who was dissing you? Hell no, I didn't know this motherfucker. He looked like an undercover cop. What happened was um, my boy did a, uh, um, was doing a, um, promoting a show with some other guy from Fresno. So they was charging people for the perform, but then they was pumping it up like it was our record release party, you know what I mean? But whatever, so um, I guess dude from Chicago holla at the homie, and I guess they must have talked him into paying them some a certain amount of money or whatever, but the show didn't crack. So dude mad that he spent his money, but he didn't get his money back. So instead of de dealing with the people he dealt with that fucked him out the bread, he dissing me and shit. I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. But I guess I feel where he coming from because it was pumped up like it was our record release party, but it really wasn't, you know what I mean? But so he felt like, I don't know, that's some bitch ass shit. He just did that just to try and get some, some fame instead of just getting at the, the motherfucker that he actually dealt with. So that's like me and you. You know, if I pay that light stand some money to perform, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And that light stand fucked me over, and now I'm dissing you because you the rapper. Like, you ain't got nothing to do with that shit. Yeah. I'm gonna go holler at the light stand. What the fuck I'm gonna be rapping about you for? I ain't gonna be rapping about nothing. I'm gonna make a phone call to the lights then and then try and link up and see if we can resolve this situation. So Well I can assure you that the light stand uh, is very professional here. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like that would ever happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We do it professional. But that's why I don't do this records. Yeah, that's really I don't do this records. It just I'm holla, like I'm gonna like dish you in your face. I'm gonna yeah. holla at you. Well that's fine. I mean, I'm gonna care as one shit. I'm gonna knock your ass off stage, if, you know. It just seems a little unprofessional to Yeah, that's stupid. It's bring stupid it into shit. your art and then Yeah, it's stupid shit. Burn bridges. Yeah. Would you ever do a like appreciation record? Well, yeah, yeah. Where you're just like, all my friends are really great rappers. I would do something like that. You just kind of like each one would be like a. Yeah, well, I've, I've kind of done something like that, but not an actual appreciation record. But I've showed my appreciation by doing stuff with other artists that oh, yeah. I. You know what I mean? But as far as doing it, I, I wouldn't mind doing it. Explicitly, like yeah, that. you could just be like, hey. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm these are to, the guys I think are great. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something like that. I'm going to do a song about them. And then I'm going to have to give you some credits on that shit, but hooking me up with the idea. Oh, yeah, that'd be a producer. Yeah. Do you have a producer you normally work with? Um, right. Of, well, you know, C List, my boy DJ C List, yeah. and my boy um, Hash Beats. And then um, my boy, um, a dude named Karima now. You know, but uh, I gotta stay on Karima now for some beats. Karima, man, give me some beats, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know, Cause he's a rapper too. So he likes to. Have you found that, cause you've you know, been at it for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. Have you found that as you go along with it, um, you kinda 
when working with producer, you kind of know what you're looking for or not yeah, you yeah, like but it. See, just... but see, the thing with the producers, right, is like, just like my boy has beats, you know, he'll send me like 20 million beats. Now, okay, out of 20 million beats, they might all be dope, but every beat ain't finna be for me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, he might send me some, hey, I want you to do something, I might not be feeling it, but just because I ain't feeling it doesn't necessarily mean it's garbage, it's just not my style. You know what I mean? So, as far as, you know, I'm dealing with producers, that's just how I do. I just pick what, what's my fit. You know what I mean? All these shoes, you know what I mean? It might be like 20 pairs of shoes out here, but all of them ain't in size 12. I can only fit a size 12. I can't fit no size 9, no size 8, no size 4. Same thing with beats, you know what I mean? I got to find the one that fit me, and then I just go for it. Have you ever passed on a beat okay. and then, like, kicked yourself for it? Well, I never really passed on the beat and kicked myself for it, but I can say I might have passed on the beat, I might have received the beat and just passed on it, and then maybe about a year later listened to it again, but like, oh, hold on, I was tripping, and then did, actually did something to it, you know what I mean? But I've never really kicked myself and asked for passing or nothing, because if it just ain't me, it just ain't me. Like, you know, I might not like it, this dude might get it and blow up, well, that was just meant for him to, you know what I mean? It was his fit. It just wasn't my fit. I couldn't fuck with it. Do people ever send you beats that you can tell are like, probably, even if you haven't heard it, are mm-hmm. probably like five years old? Like the musical style is just like a little out of step or it's a little, and you're like, well, why are you trying to cycle, you know, dump your old beats on me? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I don't really trip off the style of beats. Like, you know what I mean? As long as that shit dope, I don't give a fuck how old it sounds. Like, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. As long as it's dope, I'm gonna do what the fuck I gotta do to that shit. And then, you know, if people feel it, they feel it. If they don't feel it, they don't feel it. But as long as when I come out that studio, that shit come out how I picture that shit, that's all that matters to me, you know what I mean? So, I don't really chip off the sound, the beats. As long as that shit dope, I'm fucking with it. 90s shit, new shit, it don't matter. What do you think of the beat for the song, Boys in the Hood? Where it's like, boop, boop, boom, boom. I think that's like one of the worst beats I've ever heard. <laughs> the beep, beep. Yeah, it sucks, I, right? I, I mean, it's cool. That shit dope. To me, it was, it was dope, you know? The yeah. song's, I mean, it works. Yeah, I mean, you know, you play that shit in your car, you know, that shit made for like, you know, when you got beating up, you like, boom. Yeah, boom, I guess. Boom, boom, boom. So, you know what I mean? Because yeah. the beat for Straight Outta Compton is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it sounds like a, With the horns a war zone or something. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, you're right though. I guess yeah, I haven't listened to it loud enough or in the right. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you riding. That's that type of music back then. You know, you riding around. You know, and niggas had beat like and sound system in their car. So it's just boom, boom, boom. That's why a lot of times when you, me when I go out the studio, I like to be able to play that shit in one of my homies' cars that got a sound system just to see how it sound. And if it if it if it sound good on the sound system, then I know I gotta win it. You know what I mean? So. so you're still writing music for cruising around in cars and like you're... Yeah, well, that's a consideration. That's all a part of picking up... Oh, I'm spitting the shit. Oh, that's okay. But that's you're all a part of... Rapper spit. Uh, yeah, that's all a part of uh, uh, well, picking and choosing the type of beat you decide to want to rap to. You know what I mean? That's a major part of the shit is the beat. You know what I mean? But I don't know. To me, you know what I mean? I like to beat the bang and then the lyrics got to be up to par too. What do you think of um, uh, that, like, uh, kind of 80s style, like, nasally rap, like, voice? 80s style, like, nasally. Like, give me an example. Like that uh, kind of uh, uh, the Humpty dance. Okay. But, it, like, there's, like, that goofy aspect to hip-hop. I don't know. Okay. Do you like any of that? Well, I, I used like to like Sir Mix-a-Lot or... Yeah. Uh, I, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I like, I enjoy, I definitely enjoyed the Baby Got Back video on, you know, bitches dancing and shit. <laughs> you know, I used to, I, I, you know, that Humpty Dance is your chance yeah, to do fun. it. Yeah, it's fun. You know, that shit was hard. We used to bang that shit, you know. Shit cool. I don't have a problem with it. If you like, so you'll, you'll mess, you're into like fun. Yeah, I mean, I mean everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as long as that shit dope. I ain't into no garbage though. I ain't into that garbage. We're here in the snow, siphon. Oh, yeah, that's where I don't need to be at. We need to go back to California. <laughs> Let's I go buy a beach or something. That's California. What's that, Big Bear or something? Probably, yeah, I think it's Lake Huron. Yeah, but I don't need to be over there. It's too cold for me. Do you ever go up to the mountains or anything? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what are you might like yeah, that's it. That's they shit. I ain't got nothing to do with the. No, no, I'm straight. You can I, was, do. I went to the mountains. I was in fire camp in the mountains. Yeah, yeah fighting fires and shit against my will. <laughs> against your will? Yeah, yeah, I was in jail and they sent me to the fire camp. They make prisoners fight fires? Yeah, yeah. Cutting line, you gotta cut a line between the burnt shit and the shit that's not burnt. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I have no idea. That's what that remind me of right there. Are you like chained to all the other guys? Like, nah, you ain't chained to nothing. You're just you, out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody you know? make a break for it? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, the day that I went, I pulled up to the fire camp, it was two people running out of the shit because it's open, you know what I mean? But yeah, they catch that's them? what that remind me of. Yeah, I believe they caught him. And then took their ass to, back to Juvenile Hall or whatever. I guess they wouldn't take people up there if they didn't think they could catch them if they... Yeah, of course not. In LA. Yeah, they had coyotes and all kind of other shit up there. Rattlesnakes, all that. Was there a fire going on or it was just... Yeah, yeah. We did the, um, I forgot what, what year was that? That was like 96. It was that big ass fire, but I forgot. I can't remember where it was at. I get one. I get like one. One time we went out there and um, it was this big ass hill or mountain or whatever, and we had to. It was so steep to climb that they had to um, take a seven at a time on a helicopter to the top. And then, um, then we had to hike our way back down. But I can't really remember what fires they were, but they were pretty famous fires, though, like in '96. After. Yeah, it felt like, you know what I mean? Like I was in the elevator and shit, and just something just whoop, whoop. Did you kind of have um, mixed emotions in that you were there to like be punished and to work or whatever, but mm -hmm. you also like got to like go on a helicopter and yeah, well, you know, do this unique thing? I was just happy to not be in an enclosed situation. There's just being able, even though I'm stuck in there. You know, in jail or whatever, you know what I mean? But just being able to just be able to get out. Yeah. And none of it really bothered me. And I enjoyed being on the helicopter. I guess it was cool. Yeah. If I still would have preferred not to have been in jail. Yeah, it would be, of course. Yeah. Of course. What's the worst part about being in jail? The worst part about being in jail, to me, is being in jail. Period. Just it's, the whole yeah, not yeah, being able to leave? Yeah. Like, I'll tell you, like, the, like the last time I was in jail was in 2014 and they raided my house for some strange reason I don't know but they was talking about that um, they were looking for drugs and I didn't have any drugs in the house right but I did have a gun in the house so they raided the house and then um, they found the gun so they took me to jail and then they was like yeah man um, you know you got multiple gun charges and all that sort of type of shit so you know if you just take this possession of sales charge, we'll drop the gun charge, and then you'll be home in eight months. So, like a dumbass, I had no money to pay for nobody to actually fight for me legally. So I took that charge because had I not took the charge, they was gonna charge me with the gun shit, and I did three to five years for that, even though they went in my house for nothing. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, to make a long story short, my thing is that, uh, Going to jail sucks, and going to jail for doing nothing at all really sucks. See what I'm saying? That's that, the more to my story. That's a, I mean, there's the statistics come out all the time. That's a pretty common occurrence for African American men. Yeah, pretty much. You just much. go to jail. Like, do you, like, pretty much everyone you know has been to jail at least once, would you say? Well, like a third of the people? Yeah, a majority of people that I know has been in jail at least once. They There's only a selective few that I could count on one hand that haven't been in jail. Wow. And those dudes done did more than anybody I could even think of. You know what I mean? They're, they're just lucky. They ain't never been in jail. Wow. You know what I mean? But you know, a lot of times when you go to jail, a lot of times, you know, people like to brag about going to jail. That shit ain't nothing to brag about. You was just stupid enough to get caught. So basically, you bragging about being stupid. You know what I mean? But the, the, the whole reason why I bought my last time going to jail is because I actually, that was the first time I actually went to jail for something I didn't do. Oh. And then was bribed into taking the charge that I didn't really even, uh, or uh, 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 bribed in a, in a, um, pleading guilty to a crime I really didn't commit. So, you know, you know it's just some, it's certain moments in my life that I go through now, but like, damn, I can't believe this is happening right now. You know, getting beat, oh, and not to mention that I got beat up by the police. You know what I mean? I got pictures on Instagram of that shit, because I was just in shock that they was coming to 
the place that I laid my head at and was trying to rate the shit. I'm like, hey man, y'all got the wrong guy. Y'all got the wrong guy, man, hold up. And they just did a, you know, a number on me or whatever, so. Yeah, they can just do whatever they want. I don't think people realize Police can just do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to stop them from. Unless you got that right amount of money to yeah. play the same game they playing with you with yeah. them. Yeah, just like you know, I had to. Um, the, um, you know, I don't know if I should be talking about this shit, but you know what I mean. Um, I had the Federal and Bureau of Investigation come to my house not too long ago. You know what I mean? Asking me questions about some bullshit on Facebook. So, you know, they can see. They can't see in. All right, they can't see in but I could see out the door. So anyway, to make a long story short, my thing is, I'm not gonna come outside and talk to nobody. You know, what I look like, two guys with guns wanna come outside and question me about some shit going on Facebook. How about I come in your house, me and another guy with guns, and knock on your door and, ask, and tell you to come outside and ask you some questions about some shit you posting on Facebook. You know what I mean? So, whatever. It's a wild world out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just like, it's Crazy it's like shit. there's nothing you can do about it. You yeah, yeah, yeah. You can talk about it, but... Yeah, but if I had the right amount of money, you know what I mean? But see, then they, they know that, and then they wouldn't even yeah, mess yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the whole point. That's the fucked up shit about, you know what I'm saying? They know who they can mess with. And who they can't fuck with, yeah. That's fucked up. Excuse me. No, I would say it's a, a fair assessment of it. Mm-hmm. The food in jail. It sucks. And then they, there's all that food that like you make out of like ketchup and ramen and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was making burritos, tamales, and all kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, you get up in there. Okay, that was the, <laughs> that was the wrap. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, we have to wrap up the clock. Let's wrap this shit up. Mr. CR, thanks for coming on right, and being so sure. candid. Uh, I hope you can come back next week. Mm-hmm. It's our 100th episode. You were okay. guest 99. We're having all the guests back okay. uh, next week. So hopefully we'll see you and we're gonna have some. Yeah, dessert and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm with it. But cool, check out uh, Mr. CR. You gotta green go all tape over the too. Internet. Yeah, go to green tape. Get green tape too. Get the if you ain't got it right now, you must, I don't know if under living under a fucking rock or something, man. Go to deadpip.com or download green tape. The green tape by Mr. CR. That shit free. M I S T E R C R. The green tape. You talk the shit, but you gonna enjoy it once you download the shit. The green tape. We're getting both green tapes. Yeah, green available. tape too, though. That's mm-hmm. killing everything. That's going to kill everything. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next week for the 100th episode. Until next time, this is Adam Patrick. There's a place you can go. It's your home.